A school divided? Aquinas Institute is dealing with a controversy. This is a controversy rooted in the culture wars that are happening in schools all over the country. Good evening, I'm Doug Emblidge. And I'm Jenny Ryan. At Aquinas, at the heart of this, is a push by some families to restore what they call Christian core values. As the Rochester Beacon first reported, this debate was ignited by a wealthy alumnus who returned to Aquinas for a recent visit. 50 years ago, Robert Augustinelli graduated from Aquinas, class of 72. He went on to become a multi-millionaire financier. In November, Aquinas invited Augustinelli to visit and speak to students. I urged them to stick close to the Trident faith and to stick to that and the, patri the American dream, the patriotism we all shared. Augustinelli's version of the American dream is not one shared by all at Aquinas. He says three students walked out of his speech when he spoke of what he calls false deities. When I spoke to Augustinelli, he delved deeper into what he meant. I mean, the founders of Black Lives Matter are, are Marxists, dedicated Marxists. They belong in Cuba, not the United States. By illustration, the critical race theory is a completely false ethic. And, you know, the, the, this, this, the LGBT movement is an attempt to invert the, the, the world. It doesn't mean that you prejudice against those people, but it doesn't mean you change the values of which the nation is raised on. On the Rochester Beacon website, a student who said she walked out of that speech directed comments to Augustinelli saying, quote, it's not your time anymore. It's 2022 where people's lives are on the line. Aquinas responded to Augustinelli's speech with an email from the president to families saying they heard from several students and parents who were offended and that the guest's viewpoint do not reflect the opinions, beliefs, and viewpoints of the faculty, staff, and administration. On change.org, some parents pushed back, siding with Augustinelli, a petition calling for restoring academic freedom and Christian values at Aquinas was sent to its board of directors. Then, a counter-petition was launched, supporting what it calls critical thinking at Aquinas. It urges people to support Aquinas' board and administration and denounce racism, bigotry, and hate. On it, one supporter wrote, Aquinas places a heavy emphasis on a family environment, how can we possibly say that if we don't stand up for the members of that family that were so blatantly insulted by this speaker? A spokesperson for Aquinas would not comment, but said a statement from the school's board of trustees would be made at the end of the month. Back in London, Augustinelli says he receives daily letters of support and says Aquinas must now decide what it will be. If the parents decide they want to confront this and say, look, we want to, we want to put up a slate of directors or we want to take over the, uh, the leadership of the school. And if they decide to do that and they want my help, I'll give them my help. What kind of help would you give them? If they need the financial help, I'd give it to them. And if they need my voice, modestly put, which, is, which matters in certain circles, I'd do it. Ultimately, Augustinelli thinks students and alumnus who share his views will come together and demand a discussion with school leadership. Augustinelli says he is now working to establish a chapter of the Young Americans Foundation at Aquinas for students who share the values of which he espouses. He told me he is no longer considering that seven-figure gift to his alma mater. New York's mask mandate struck down on Monday, back in effect tonight. The governor says it's not time to stop wearing masks in public places or schools. Now, I am so looking forward to the day to say these are history. We don't have to do this any longer. A judge today allowed the mask mandate that was struck down last night to remain in effect pending further court action. Good evening, I'm Doug Embleage. Ginny's off tonight. The back and forth on this is putting schools in a tough spot. Just know that if he is segregated and treated differently than any other student, we will be contacting our lawyer and we will be coming to sue the school district. Emboldened by yesterday's court ruling, a Spencerport father recorded this exchange with his son's principal after he insisted his child be allowed into school without a mask. 
but most schools were still enforcing the mask mandate today. And with today's ruling, masks will be required in schools again tomorrow. 13 WAM's Carla Rogner reports the discontent was evident at some school board meetings tonight. Yeah, it was, though the decision to enforce masking is out of the board's hands tonight at the Rush Honey Rush Henrietta School District board meeting. Several parents spoke asking for the masking to end in schools. Rush Henrietta Superintendent Bo Wright had a straightforward message for his district. Our district is required to comply with this regulation and will continue to require all students, staff, and others who are on campus to wear masks while this process is coming to completion. With a ruling from a state judge, the district has no choice but to continue following the mask mandate. Some came to the school board meeting armed with posters against the mandate. When are you going to stand up for our kids? If you want to wear masks... This is not out of the board's hands. They are the board. Do they not decide what happens to our children when they go to school? So school. clearly, somebody thinks that this law or this you know, ruling is unlawful. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. A father upset his kid had to mask up during the hours the mandate was not in place Tuesday. Everyone's confused and we're being fed this by the Board of Education. Some parents even threatening to take their kids out of school. What happened to letting parents parent the way that they want to? Monroe County Health Commissioner Dr. Mike Mendoza says masks continue to work to prevent the spread of COVID in schools and the community. And our numbers are still high. I mean, they're certainly declining, which is very reassuring. But we have to remember that that decline occurred during when mask use was actually quite good. As the appeals process continues, schools and the rest of New York will have to keep masking up. But the mask mandate is set to expire a week from today on February 1st. A week after Monroe County promised major safety changes to the Civic Center parking garage, Police were called to it yesterday after a man reportedly attempted to set another man on fire. Today, 13 WAM's Jane Chaco went to the garage to find out how those recent changes are impacting feelings of safety. Jane? Yeah, the head of public safety says that security acted fast yesterday when an argument between two men escalated. And the people I spoke to today say they feel safe parking in the garage since these changes have been implemented. Mary Jo Hopkins forgot where she parked her car this afternoon, so she started by checking the lower level. Coming out now, I tried the first ground level on number one, and it was kind of dark and a little scary. I had to walk around trying to see if I, my car was there. And there were like people sitting along the wall, just kind of like talking and joking. She noticed the next main floor was much brighter and there was more security. This is a little better with a little bit better lighting. We counted three security vehicles patrolling the garage Wednesday afternoon. Tanya Jones parks here often and says she's usually on high alert, but today she felt safe walking around the garage. You know, usually you'll come out and you'll see a lot of people, you know, just hanging around, but now I haven't um, seen that many people hanging around. And yeah, when I come here, I usually do be scared, you know, because it has been dark and you never know who's going to come from behind one of these cars. A need for more security was prompted by an assault two weeks ago. Now, Rochester police are investigating one man's attempt to set another man on fire in the Civic Center garage yesterday afternoon. The person who attempted to start the fire was detained. The head of public safety for the county says because of the enhanced security, the incident was handled very quickly. First responders were called immediately. Christy Haller says she's glad to see more security after yesterday's events. I noticed um, security driving around earlier this morning when I first parked, and I definitely appreciated that in case something happened. Yeah. I felt like someone was around to talk to. And the county says that they aren't kicking any homeless people out of the garage, but working to place them in safer housing. We asked the county today how many people, if there are any more, did the county help put in that safer housing, and we're still waiting to hear back.